Our next speaker, um, Dr. Xenia von Edic, is the first person today who will talk about open access editing, so the side of the publisher, if I can present it so. She will present us Copernicus publication, which has been one of the very first commercial initiatives of publishing in gold open access. Operational since 2001 and currently publishing 32 titles in different subject areas, Copernicus attaches high importance to the peer reviewing process, we already mentioned this point, as well as to the transparency of it. How does it work? What are the benefits for the authors and for the dissemination of research results? This is Van Endic, you are in charge of business development at Copernicus. We are all ears. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for the introduction and thank you uh, very much for inviting me here to present Copernicus publications. Um, so my, the title of my presentation today is Innovative Open Access Publishing and Public Peer Review. Um, to provide you with a short overview on what I'm going to talk about, I also will first give a really uh, short overview on open access publishing. Um, then I provide some insights about Copernicus, about the company, and uh, I want to as, um, especially emphasize on the multiple open access strategy and uh, with particular focus on the peer review process. Um, so what is Gold OA? I think everybody knows, but only to, to summarize it really short again. Um, green open access is like we heard before, the free access to postprints and preprints. Gold OA, in contrast, provides the free access to the article source, so to say to the journal. Um, it includes the costs of financing the publication um, of the peer review process of the uh, open access publication as well as the archiving. So a recent investigation of uh, Laxo and Berg uh, published in uh, BMC, so Biomed Central Medicine, um, found that 17% of the uh, scopus uh, of the articles indexing scopus in 2011 was already OA, but they include uh, also delayed open access where the full journal uh, were uh, open access after, I think they had uh, one year as a benchmark. So what about the financing of open uh, access? Um, of course, we have the also pay model. Here we can differ differentiate between page charges and article charges. Uh, Copernicus, for example, charge per page because we say there is a big difference between a long review article and the cost what it causes for, 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 for pro producing this article and a short technical note. So that's what the reason why we say, okay, page uh, charges, but there are other, also, uh, other publishers, or a lot of other publishers, uh, for example, like PLOS, um, they charge on an article level. There are also the differentiation in submission uh, versus publication charges. Um, why we think, okay, uh, one only should pay for the, for the published version of the article. Uh, one word again to the author charges, it always sounds like the author himself, herself, has to pay these charges, but often it's like we heard before, included in the grants. It is um, often they are uh, funds available at the libraries. For example, in Germany, the uh, DFG, the major fund, uh, funder of uh, yeah, uh, basic research, um, they introduced together with uh, a whole range of universities, um, publications funds at libraries, where also of the uh, also of these institutions can come to the library and get a refund for the open access charges. Um, then we have the way of um, agreements from in research institutions and publishers, often called memberships, but also called institutional agreements, like for Copernicus, where the payments of the authors are di um, of these institutions are directly settled between the um, institution and the publisher, and the author is not involved anymore. Um, then it was already mentioned there's a hybrid model uh, which is basically um, open access option in uh, subscription journals but it always is a question whether these um, yeah, these models face like double dipping 
um, yeah, just I, I mentioned only spring it as one example. Of course, there are many others. And we have the community fee model, for example. Um, there's a conference, and the conference says, hey, we want to publish the proceedings open access. Um, and then you have the, the, the cost of open access publishing integrated in the registration fee of the conference, just as an example. And of course, then we have the institutional ownership model. This is the so-called platinum way of open access, where it's at no cost for the authors and at no cost for the reader. Um, in like studies from around 2006, 2007, there were several, uh, several studies found that about 70% of the OA journals at that time were fully funded. But <clears throat> recent investigations from the earlier cited study show that the amount of journals here in this light blue uh, which publish uh, open access articles and um, um, obtain article processing charges is really increasing and really make a bigger share out of the whole open access articles. So um, now I want to present you something about Copernicus. Uh, Copernicus was found in 1988 as a spin-off of the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research. Um, at the first business was the organization of scientific conferences, and we're still doing that. So we have two business parts, one the publishing and the other one uh, the professional congress organization. In mid-90s, we started um, as a subscription publisher, but in 2001, um, I think as a second commercial publisher, we uh, opened up for uh, open access, and we started our first open access journal in 2001. Um, and followed, uh, we moved all other titles we had at that time into open access. So by 2004, I think all our journals were converted to open access. So like it was mentioned before, um, we are currently publishing uh, 32 peer-reviewed open access journals um, in different subject area, but we have a focus on geoscience and environmental sciences but also engineering, and we broaden up our portfolio. Uh, in addition, we have 15 access review discussion forums, uh, which I come, to back, uh, I come to explain a bit later. We're currently about 50 staff members in our offices in Göttingen. We are a co-founder of the OASPA, which is the trade organization of uh, scholarly open access publishers, uh, but we're also a member of uh, STM, which is the biggest publisher organization in the STM field. And uh, we're also a member of ORCID, an organization which, um, which deals with the disambiguation of authors uh, in, with regard to names. So in 2012, we uh, almost published 137,000 pages uh, in about uh, 5,300 um, articles. We had uh, submissions from over uh, 70 countries, um, about 1,500 editors, so all, all stages were involved in the publication of our journals. And like I said, we had uh, to get those uh, 47 journals and discussion forums. So what I do mean with the multiple open access strategy we follow. So we say we have a triple, multi, uh, triple open access um, strategy. So first, we provide open access to the manuf manufacturer of the article. Second, we provide open access to the peer review process. And last but not least, of course, we provide open access to the publication. So from submission to acceptance, um, we have one or two personal contact for effort, uh, editors, referees, authors. Uh, we have our own developed online uh, review system with extended personal support. If an article gets are accepted, uh, so every author has one personal contract um, uh, who deals with for the proofreading for the different iter iteration and it, um, yeah, we have always project teams for the different journals. So we really have also coming back to us and said, okay, last time I was in contact with Ms. X, 
could, could I deal with her again because it was so nice. <laughs> and um, so and we, don't, we don't have any uh, limitations in terms of, of iterations of proofreading. And of course, we provide the open access uh, library. We have an alert service via RSS feed and email to readers. We provide e and archiving uh, around the world. And of course, also indexing in databases and search en engines. This only is possible because of our um, straight insourcing strategy. So we really provide all publishing services in-house uh, the software development, the typesetting, the English language copy editing, the editorial support, um, because we really want to listen to the scientific communities and really want to um, yeah, provide maximum service for authors and for the works, but of course also for, for editors and referees. <clears throat> And therefore, uh, we also don't aim to gain ownership in contrast to several other publishers. So we partner mainly with scientific associations. We let the society own the journals, control the editorial policy. It's not only societies, we also have other research institutions. We have group of researchers, and yet we also own some of the titles our own, but from the 32 titles, we only own five and the others are owned by other entities and uh, we just provide the um, services which we uh, hope they are really tailored for them. Um, so what we recommend when we um, start the journal is not to introduce article processing charts right from the beginning because a journal needs to develop until it has a reputation that also our own institutions are willing to pay for it um, so, but afterwards, after these, um, this startup phase, so we normally say after a journal got in the index with Thomson Reuters, uh, Web of Science, we say, okay, now the, uh, the society owning the journal can determine the costs and therefore um, is able to also generate surplus, but also to subsidize the journals. So the business is run by Copernicus, but the societies can earn a license fee and the whole scientific um, content acquirement and so it's left to the scientists. Here are some examples of societies and organizations we are working with. So now um, coming to the main part, uh, as I said before, to the open access to the review process. Open access we think has the, uh, the, the, the really um, fundamental um, potential to enhance quality by the submitted manuscript can be OA, the review reports can be open access, the manuscript can be discussed open access, and of course accepted publication can be open access. So therefore we have something which is optional, so the journals don't have to do it, but they can do it, uh, but they have to decide whether they want to be an interactive journal or not. And uh, currently, we have 15 interactive journals. So approximately, approximately half of our journals are interactive. And it works like this, that the author submits uh, the manuscript. Then uh, it is followed by a brief um, access review by uh, the editor. And the editor also nominates uh, referees during this phase. He can ask also for technical corrections and of course he also can reject the manuscript at this stage if it doesn't fit the, the scope of the journal. Um, but if it is accepted, it is published as a discussion paper uh, in an online forum. The referees need to post the comments they have on the manuscript openly accessible into this forum. Also, the scientific community is invited to join the discussion and to really enhance the quality of the submitted manuscript. Um, the author has to openly, or the authors have to openly answer the, quest, uh, the, 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 the comments of the reviewers in this forum. And this is what we call the first stage in this discussion forum. In the second stage, <coughs> there also does uh, the revisions uh, submitted again to the editor. 
the editor is free to again ask referees um, if it's, for example, major revisions which were required after the discussion. And then in the second stage, the uh, paper is published in the final, as finally revised paper in the journal. Okay, this is um, an example how such an article as discussion paper looks like. So it is more screen optimized. You have a navigation on the, um, on the right hand side. And this is like the record of the discussion looks like. Um, and the whole discussion, all things said in the discussion are citable, they remain online, have a, have a DOI, and uh, therefore also it's a, it's, uh, we, the, the whole discussion and review process therefore can be tracked. Um, so, like I said, these are the points at the, uh, to summarize the process again. In general, it, it is designed to foster uh, scientific discussion to maximize the effectiveness and transparency of the quality insurance and to enable a rapid publication uh, of new scientific results because this, after this access review, the, the, the uh, discussion papers are published. And um, yeah, this is basically. So it is rapid and thorough. Um, we, had, we just had the, the, the discussion where the open access journals are, um, high quality journals. Um, most of the journals applying this, um, uh, this review process have really high impact factors, three of them the highest in their category. So I think it's, um, it's reasonable um, when we just talk about the impact factor. Um, and it's a win-win situation for authors, reviewers and readers. They also get direct feedback to the work that the actually because already the submitted manuscript is open access also really tend to submit higher quality manuscripts because yeah, everybody already can see, it, see them. And it is a documentation of the review for the reader. So last but not least in, the, um, in our uh, multiple open access strategy, it's of course we publish everything under the CC BY license because we think open access is not or should not only be the accessibility of uh, scientific output, but it should also make reuse possible. Um, like I said before, we are caring about archiving. So we're uh, cooperating with the e-archive Portico and Clocks. We cooperate with the uh, Library of Congress, the Bodleian Library, the Do German National Library, as well as the State Library of Lower Saxony in Germany. Uh, they receive print copies of all our journals, which are immediate online but nevertheless afterwards summarize into issues to, to just uh, make sure that also the print archiving can be done. We do indexing uh, with Thomson Reuters, with Scopus, with a lot of different uh, subject specific um, databases and indices. Uh, Google Scholar of course is crawling our content and uh, if an editor wants to add any other discipline, uh, discipline specific source it is really welcome. So um, now I also want to like, with the end, um, to come to a recent development, uh, which is providing article level metrics. This again f refers to, okay, the measurement of scientific impact, not only by via the impact factor on the journal level, but also um, on an article level. Uh, so we provide figures on usage, on the impact in terms of citations. At the moment we display cross-ref citations, but soon we will also display uh, scope of citations. Uh, we display different um, uh, bookmarking services as Mendeley, and also discussion on um, social media. <coughs> yeah, and this, uh, our article level metrics are based on the API provided by the Public Library of Science, and uh, maybe we will also hear some some more details about it later on. So with this, I want to end my presentation and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, so that's one way to publish in open access. Are there some questions about the, the Copernicus 
model or service. Okay, uh, thank you for, for this talk first. I had uh, one question. So you mentioned that uh, so societies can own the, the journals that you publish, uh, which is an interesting development in my po from, my po from my point of view, because we've seen many journals originally published by scholarly societies who have been absorbed by uh, large publishers, large commercial editor, uh, publishers in the, in the past years. Uh, so first of all, how many uh, of those 32 journals uh, that you have right now are owned by uh, such uh, societies? And uh, do you expect more societies to, uh, to join you in the near future to, to create uh, new journals, uh, let's say more, more grassroots journals in a way? Um, yeah, yes, thank you. So for the first part of the question, it's uh, 27 journals uh, are owned by societies. So um, we, or by societies or on, on and other like non-profit organizations with a scientific background. So for example, we have one engineering organization. They also do a lot of um, work with industry, but they have the scientific part and, for example, so it's 27. And yes, I think we will uh, partner with more associations in future. Um, of course, transforming existing journals into open access where a large part, parts of the society's revenues, depending on, is always difficult because of the transition phase and how to get it. Because like I said, it is possible to generate income also for societies with open access because, as I said, we have a, like, a fee per page, uh, which we charge to the author at the beginning to the society. Um, but the society can determine whether we should charge more to the author and then the difference, they get a, li a license fee. Um, so this is basically the, the business model for, so for the societies behind that. But it is, um, yeah, if the journals are really, are really Big, it is always a problem. Um, oh, we already had some discussion with societies where they just faced the problem that they think they can't finance the transition. Afterwards, it's okay again, but um, or they were afraid of. I think it, it would have been possible, but nevertheless, I think there will more societies come and join us. Yeah. Any other questions? There are questions. Alexander. <laughs> How many of uh, your journals uh, have chosen the open uh, review process? Um, at the moment, it's uh, 15, but um, some of them I was already thinking of um, like transforming from the like traditional peer review model into the open, uh, or we call it like it's not open because referees don't have to be necessarily uh, say their names. So, it's, it's, uh, so we call it public. Um, and we will launch another one next year. And so it's, it's continuously growing, but it's, it's half of the journals at the moment. Okay, thank you. No question anymore? Thank you. Thank you very much.